Comrade Araji Mugabe and his family are safe and sound and their security is guaranteed. When it comes to matters of protecting our revolution, the military will not hesitate to step in. The NUPF must deal with that issue because Zimbabwe is not our colony. This is the time for the new rebirth of Africa. Every dictator in Africa must be removed. Since things have changed, the police are no longer in charge as well, in control of law and order, things might go the other way. We would like to call for calm and restraint, particularly to the defense force and all security forces in Zimbabwe. A nation in crisis and a battle for its very soul erupts. We are only targeting criminals around him who are committing crimes that are causing social and economic suffering in the country in order to bring them to justice. Tuesday, 14 November 2017, Zimbabweans make their way home after a seemingly normal day. But little do they know that the calm is about to be shattered. We wish to assure the nation that His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Commander in Chief of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, Comrade Araji Mugabe, and his family are safe and sound, and their security is guaranteed. Armoured personnel carriers of the Zimbabwe National Army occupy the capital, Harare. Soldiers seize control of key facilities, including the State House, Parliament and the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation. Fellow Zimbabweans, following the address we made on 13 November 2017, which we believe our main broadcaster, Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, and the Herald were directed not to publicize the situation in our country has moved to another level. Senior government and ruling party ZANU-PF figures are reportedly placed under house arrest. Zimbabwe President Robert Mugabe, Deputy Director Central Intelligence Organization Albert Ngulube, Higher Education Minister Jonathan Moyo, and local government minister Xavier Kasukuwere are also confined. Bullet holes at the home of Finance Minister Ignatius Chombo testify to the army encountering some resistance. Police Commissioner General Augustine Chihuri has also been accused of vicious crackdowns on protests in recent months. Also held is outspoken ZANU-PF youth leader Kuzai Chipanga. We learned from our mistakes and from this big mistake, we have learned a lot. I also like to emphasize that um, this statement which I have given, I have not been persuaded, neither coerced or forced to do as such. I'm emphasizing that um, I have reflected on my own as, the, as, as, as a young person, as a leader of the youth league. Hence, I have come to this juncture of offering myself to the state media to give this public apology. We shall also make public efforts to approach the commanders of our defense forces in person so that we convey this apology. General Constantino Chiwenga had issued a warning, stop the purges of senior ZANU-PF officials like Vice President Emerson Mnangangwa or face possible army intervention. Troops invade Harare the very next day. Things have changed. The police are no longer in charge as well, in control of law and order. 
things might go the other way. Apart from reports of sporadic gunfire, the military action seems to have been a bloodless one. The ruling Zanapia party here in Zimbabwe and the military are on a collision course. But just looking at the streets here in Harare, it appears as if it is business as, us as usual. You'd think the citizens are oblivious to the fact that History is being shaped here in Zimbabwe. The leaders of this country and the military are behind closed doors having negotiations with regards to the succession race in this country. Behind me is what is called the Africa Unity Square. It is a very iconic place here in Harare. It is very uh, familiar with a lot of citizens, especially with the civic organizations who gather there and protest about whatever issues that they have in Zimbabwe. Today it is very quiet, but just taking a closer look right there is the Zimbabwean flag. It is in tatters and perhaps a reflection of the state of affairs here in Zimbabwe. Despite appearances, the anxiety is tangible. Stunned Zimbabweans face an even more uncertain future. All as Zimbabweans, we are singing to say Changirai Chete Chete by 2018. I don't see that going to happen. So it will remain to say the power will remain in the hands of the tyrannic rule, which is ZANU PF. We are watching what's going on. Because Zimbabwe has always been supported from the diaspora. And we are not like uh, orphans. We deserve the right to have a proper country run by proper people. You know, whenever you see the military getting involved in civil politics, it's, it's, a, it's, a, worry, it's a worrying situation. Now the military moving in sort of sends shivers to the whole democratic movement, sends shivers to the whole uh, you know, hope that Zimbabwe is ahead for regime change. Removing Mugabe, who is an icon in Zimbabwe, sends a message to all Africans. This is the time for the new rebirth of Africa. Every dictator in Africa must be removed. Shortly after the news breaks, South African President Jacob Zuma calls for a peaceful resolution. In his capacity as the Southern African Development Community, SADC Chair, Zuma sends special envoys to Zimbabwe and Angola. As SADC, we are very concerned about the situation in Zimbabwe. We would like to call for calm and restraint, <clears throat> particularly to the Defense Force and all security forces in Zimbabwe. I have also <clears throat> contacted His Excellency President Mugabe, <clears throat> whom I had time to talk to, and he is fine but confined in his home. <clears throat> I have also managed to get <clears throat> the briefing about the situation in Zimbabwe. <clears throat> but of course, given the seriousness of the situation, I've taken a decision to send an envoy to be able to conduct the leaders of the Defense Force who have undertaken these operations, but also to meet with President Mugabe so that we have a more clear picture of what is happening in Zimbabwe. Tensions had been simmering for years over who would succeed the now 93-year-old President Mugabe. I'm very optimistic that Zimbabwe is actually getting freedom that we have waited for since 1980. Uh, what is going to happen now is uh, there, will be, there will be negotiations uh, that are happening between the opposition forces and ZANU-PF are uh, led by Mnangagwa. Obviously, Mnangagwa is now the de facto leader of ZANU-PF. Uh, Mugabe is under, um, under house arrest in a way. And um, 
Uh, we know that he's still the president, but in terms of leading the party, he's no longer the leader of the party. He has already been fired by the war veterans. So what we are going to see now is a process where Mugabe is forced out or is, tell, is told to leave power so that we can create conditions that are free and fair for elections within ZANPF at first and eventually within the nation. So these are the last days of Mugabe. I think by December 12th, we would not have a Mugabe to talk about. He will be totally gone. And if he doesn't want to go with the people of Zimbabwe alongside our uh, army, we are going to make sure that he's pushed out totally. First Lady Grace Mugabe married the president in 1996. Grace, who has presidential ambitions herself, secures the support of the younger Generation 40, or G40 faction. But one obstacle remains in the form of her biggest rival, Vice President Emerson Mnangangwa. But on November 9th, the way is cleared as President Mugabe fires Mnangangwa. His Excellency the President, Comrade Araji Mugabe, has exercised his powers to relieve Honorable Vice President Edi Mnangagwa of his position as Vice President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. He has also demonstrated little probity in the execution of his duties. It's evident that uh, Zimbabwe has had a political crisis for a long time. Uh, we have seen this over many years, and I think it has uh, merely uh, come to a fore now with the firing of the vice president, uh, which was an event that triggered the current developments in the country. The succession battle has been a vicious one. August 2017, Vice President Mnangangwa is treated in hospital in South Africa, allegedly after being poisoned. The 52-year-old First Lady publicly denies being behind any such plot. But Mnangangwa still enjoys the Zimbabwe Army's backing. The, the civilians of the country, the political parties itself, has been having infighting because of uh, um, uh, succession battles, you know, where they, they are not very certain of whom they want to choose. So there's factions into uh, the PF itself, apart from the opposition political parties. And uh, I think it's only fair now, as we are speaking now at the moment, uh, the army is trying to reconcile the, 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 the internal uh, battle into the PF uh, to make sure that uh, both parties into the political party uh, and the, the, the outside are, are negotiated on the round table for the betterment of uh, um, Zimbabwe. It seems to be a miserable end to the rule of one of Africa's longest serving leaders. This situation has been incubated for a, a couple of number of years. Uh, burning through people's mind, especially the Zimbabweans and the international community. And uh, uh, it's only fair that uh, uh, things have turned out like this, and uh, which was uh, uh, imminent. Robert Mugabe has been widely hailed as a revolutionary hero. But he's also been derided as a dictator for his policies and violent suppression of political critics. 21 February 1924, Robert Gabriel Mugabe is born to a poor Shona family in Kutama, southern Rhodesia. He's imprisoned between 1964 and 74 for sedition. This is after criticizing the then white minority government of Ian Smith. Upon his release, he flees to Mozambique and spearheads the so-called Rhodesian Bush War. An African nationalist at heart, Mugabe chairs the Zimbabwe African National Union, ZANU Group, from 1975 
1980. He then leads ZANU's successor Patriotic Front, or ZANU-PF, from 1980 onwards. The United Kingdom brokers peace negotiations, which leads to the signing of Lancaster House Agreement on 21st December 1979. Mugabe subsequently leads ZANU-PF to victory in the 1980 general elections. He serves as Zimbabwean Prime Minister from 1980 to 1987. Mugabe is elected president in December 1987, a position he holds for three decades. During his long-term reign, he's also chaired the non-aligned movement from 1986 to 89, the Organization of African Unity from 1997 to 98, and the African Union from 2015 to 2016. Robert Mugabe remains a, a revolutionary. How do you say a man who won elections is a tyrant? He has never presided over any mass murder of our people. He, he continues to lead a, a, a party that advocates for a very radical economic uh, policies uh, in Zimbabwe continues to be actually the only remaining leader in Africa which can stand up to the West. But what events could have forced the army's hand in this way? In June 2007, retired army captain Albert Matapo is allegedly involved in a coup attempt. His aim is to install Emerson Mnangangwa as president. But Captain Matapo reportedly denies this, calling Mnangangwa bad or potentially worse than Robert Mugabe. The issue is a chief of the army in Zimbabwe made by a certain statement. The government in Zimbabwe must deal with that matter, not the ANC in South Africa. ZANU PF must deal with that issue because Zimbabwe is not our colony, it is not our province, it is our neighbor. If things go wrong there, of course we'll be concerned because it will impact on us, but we have no authority over them. That's the point we're making. At one time, uh, at the height of the Zimbabwe question, there was suggestion by big powers that we must just walk into Zimbabwe, uh, whip them to line. We will not do that. It is not done. It's our neighbor. In 2008, the opposition movement for democratic change leader Morgan Swangarai withdraws from a runoff election. This is allegedly after a campaign of violence by Mnangangwa against opposition supporters. Swangarai, however, has evidently been keeping his options open. We have therefore resolved and agreed on an urgent need for a roadmap to return the legitimacy. That includes the following critical signs. One, that in the interest of the people of Zimbabwe, Mr. Robert Mugabe must resign, step down immediately in line with the national sentiment and expectation, taking full regard of his legacy and the contribution to Zimbabwe, pre and the post Zimbabwe. That they be a negotiated, all inclusive transitional mechanism. I'm emphasizing transitional mechanism. And that the purpose, the essence, the nature and character of that mechanism be agreed upon by all national stakeholders that they be comprehensive reforms for a free and a fair and credible election to be held upon the full implementation of those reforms. And that they be an agreed post-election framework to guarantee stability, peace, and national prosperity. That SADAC, the African Union, all the international bodies, be underwriters and guarantors to the red map to the road map to a free and fair election. 
Meanwhile, Zimbabwe is still reeling from severe socio-economic challenges. In 2000, President Robert Mugabe calls for farm land grabs, which lead to chronic food shortages. In 2008, hyperinflation leads to a collapse of the Zimbabwe dollar. Confidence in the parallel bond note currency all but collapses after its launch in 2016. And all the while, the Mugabe family is derided for its lavish lifestyle while the economy crumbles. Uh, you can consider the, 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 the uh, President Robert Mugabe's wife uh, coming into power and dictating, not really coming into power, she holds uh, none of the government positions, but because she's the first lady, uh, she took that advantage and the lead to control, uh, including the cabinet ministers, uh, as well as the, 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 the members of the political party. Uh, we've heard uh, of her in the past trying to uh, control uh, where she uh, engineered, uh, if I may say, uh, the outstanding of uh, um, the, the deputy president, uh, Joyce Mujuru. Um, uh, she, she, she made sure that she had to poison, and uh, also she has done again uh, recently when she um, engineered and made President Robert Mugabe to sign a dismissal, citing that uh, because he's been disloyal and all that type of thing. And uh, uh, President Robert Mugabe has been in a very bad situation. You know, I can feel for him as well uh, because all these uh, um, advisors and people who've been around him, they've been actually been dragging him uh, to an extent where he's unresponsive. He hasn't been running the government. I mean, uh, the finance minister um, uh, uh, and uh, the rest of his team in the cabinet, those are the people who've been running the country and they've been looting the country. Uh, we heard uh, there have been there have been arrests uh, of of cabinet ministers and uh, and all, all, all who are involved into uh, manipulating the country and the resources you know at an expense of poor people. So um, that's the situation at the moment. So we only pray that uh, the situation normalizes and uh, um, uh, it does not happen again and uh, the, that uh, the elections will be held uh, in peace uh, and uh, uh, for uh, peaceful elections so that. Uh, uh, every Zimbabweans, and this will be the, um, an example to the rest of uh, the African continent and the world that uh, should the, the president take advantage into uh, beyond the constitution of each and every country, the military are there to watch what they are doing. And, uh, you know, even if they leave the politics, I mean, they, they might be held responsible for that. Things develop swiftly after the army's crackdown. Another former vice president, Joyce Mujuru, calls for elections with the African Union and United Nations oversight. PRC believes that free, fair and credible elections can only be achieved through an, an enabling environment, both during the current and registration exercise for one to register to vote and to actually voting process itself. National elections are the, back, are the backdrop of every <coughs> celebrated constitutional democracy. If it therefore follows that such elections should be observed and supervised by the African Union, SADC, electoral pan-African institutions, civil society, local electoral agencies, and the international community under the auspices of the United Nations. Majuru is optimistic about the future despite the challenges. What divides us as a nation is smaller than what <coughs> binds us. We ought to be bound by ideological underpinnings of social democracy, pan-Africanism, decolonial thought and principles of a modern democratic developmental state. It's time to reflect as we seek to rebuild and reconstruct our beautiful country our great Zimbabwe.
together we can make our country great. May God bless Zimbabwe, may God bless us all. It's now Friday, November 17, 2017, three days since the army's action. A major shake-up in Zimbabwe has occurred, or has it? The bells seem to be tolling on Robert Mugabe's long, controversial reign as president. But, in a bizarre twist, he appears at a university graduation. has made his first official public visit at the Zimbabwe Open University, who is here to officiate the graduation. Not exactly the smooth transition that Mugabe's critics may have hoped for. So far, there are no confirmed reports of a signing of any kind of an agreement. Uh, of course, the negotiations are underway, but there have not been any confirmed, confirmed reports that he indeed has signed, and this is the outcome. The reason why this is very um, interesting is that we find that this, as I've already man uh, maintained, my status quo is that what is happening in Zimbabwe is not really a coup, even though people would like to call it a coup. It's not a coup. It is actually uh, an internal party politics of ZANU-PF that has seen the army, the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, you know, coming in, intervening, uh, based on Section 212 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, which empowers the defense forces to uphold the Constitution should there be any instability or threat to the country. The question now is, will this upheaval lead to the desperately needed economic and political stability? Because if not, this beautiful, landlocked southern African nation could easily be on the brink of becoming another Zimbabwe ruins.